Johnny Girl, former coach and manager of the Lynchburg Twins, the Minnesota Twins, as well as the Cleveland Indians. He now spends his time advising players within the Cleveland Indians organization. Thank you so much for joining me. It's going to be my pleasure to be here with you. Yes, you have been in baseball for over 60 years. Yeah. How did your love for the game begin? Well, to be honest with you, probably when I was a little tyke running around and I had some neighbors that uh, were playing baseball amateur-wise and they used to drag me out of the house with my dad and get me out on the front porch and throw baseballs at me and play catch when I was about six, seven years old. And then from that, I developed a love for the game and pursued it in high school and went four years there and then immediately signed a professional contract at the age of 17. Wow. And you made your major league debut when you were 23 with the Cubs. Right. What was it like to get that call to be a major leaguer? Oh, my God. It was unbelievable. It was it was a thrill of a lifetime. Uh, of course, it was very huge for my dad, who was uh, who uh, was instrumental in me getting a love for the game like I have. And uh, when I first got there, he, he was so thrilled about it. And, uh, you know, I came up with some other young players from the Memphis team in the Southern League. Came from double-A to the major leagues, which was a pretty good accomplishment back in them days because we only had 16 teams in all of Major League Baseball, and eight of those were in the National League, eight were over in the American League. So the talent level and the pitching that you had to face back then was, was pretty good. Yeah, and you got to be teammates with legendary players like right. Hank Aaron and Ernie Banks. What yeah. was it like to get to share the field with players like that? Well, you know, we were all very young. Hank and I, uh, we were teammates in Eau Claire, Wisconsin in the minor leagues uh, in the Northern League years ago. And and uh, he was a kid that they just signed from Mobile, Alabama. The amazing thing about Hank that uh, comes to mind when I ever think about him that year was that he hit cross-handed, which was very unorthodox for any hitter. Yet he led the league in hitting with a 3.30 average, and he was a shortstop at that time. And then they converted him to the outfield the following year, and then they got him to swing conventional with the grip, which he was he was supposed to be like. And he ended up being a pretty good home run hitter in his day. Not bad, right? Yeah, really. Yeah. And uh, you know, uh, the one thing about my my career in baseball, which I'm very proud of, is the fact that. I had two young kids in our minor league system here several years ago. They decided to, they wanted to find out how many Hall of Famers that I had either played against or played with or whatever, and they did a research on it. Uh, we were in Hagerstown, Maryland. Apparently, they didn't have too much to do those days, and uh, they came up with 139. That was about seven years ago, so there's been quite a few more since then. It's been a good ride. <laughs> yeah, it has been. And I imagine playing at places like Wrigley Field and Fenway Park and Old Yankee Stadium. Yeah. I imagine that doesn't get old. Such no. a surreal feeling walking no. out there. No, not a bit. My biggest thrill probably came when I went to Fenway Park and it was only 35 miles from my home in Rhode Island where I grew up and all my friends were there and I played my first you know, major league game in Fenway Park. And uh, it was pretty exciting. I mean, Stremski was playing left field and, and I happened to be on first base and it was a base hit to the outfield and and uh, of course uh, it wasn't Fenway Park was pretty short in left field and I kind of challenged Yaz and I surprised him and fortunately got to third base otherwise I probably would have been addressed about that from the manager had I got thrown out but you know the memories are so many uh, going to Yankee Stadium and and hitting a home run there off of uh, Jim Bouton was a thrill for me and having some pretty good days against Whitey Ford when I was a young player that always uh, makes me reminisce a little bit and uh, it's quite a, quite a ride. Absolutely and in your years with baseball how have you seen the game as well as the minor league system change? Well uh, you know everything we do today is always for the better betterment of the game and also for teaching the game. And, um, you know, we don't have, back in my day when I was managing in the minor leagues, there was only me, no other coaches, no no trainer. It was a clubhouse guy that was a trainer. Today we got uh, we got a manager and three and three coaches here, or two coaches here, and other, other affiliates that we have, we have a manager and three coaches. So 
it makes it pretty pretty good to have that many guys on deck to be able to, to train the players and, and give them the work they need to be able to become better players and and it takes the workload off of the manager to be able to you know just kind of watch that and develop it and, 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 and trust in their coaches to be able to get that done. Yeah, and there are campaigns these days to make baseball fun again, which would oh, maybe yeah. suggest that it's yeah. lost some luster. But yeah. do you love the game today as much as you did when you first well, started probably it? Probably more. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the big thing for me is being able to, uh, to be around these kids. I mean, I'm 82 years old. And I'm still coming out here and enjoying every day that I have out here. But I'm, I'm also enjoying the fact that I got kids 20, 25 years old and I'm, I'm asked to kind of be an advisor to them, be a resource for them to bounce things off of and, give, and ask for help in certain areas of the games as well as the manager and coaches. So it's a very satisfying job for me. I enjoy it more now than I did back years ago. But uh, the game has changed, no question about it. Uh, I mean, they're big into sabermetrics and analytics and all that. I mean, we did that, but we didn't do it at the scale and scope of what they do today. I mean, we, we kept our own uh, own charts and on hitters and also on pitchers. So it's nothing new other, other than the fact that we got peop more people doing it and having more information and resources to give back to us. Uh, yeah. And your official job title is advisor. What all right. does that entail? Well, my job description takes in me going around to all the uh, full season affiliates and uh, I'll make two trips to each one and when I come in it'll be for a five-day trip and I'll be there to, uh, just watch and observe what's going on and make sure that all our all our fundamentals and the things that we're trying to get done with each and every player is followed through on and, and uh, you know, just report back to the front office and let them know that everything is going good. I mean, you can't, you can't be much better than what we are here right now. I mean, we're in first place. We've got a, a very good crop of young players here to, to uh, you know, develop, and we're pretty excited about quite a few of them. And it's it's pretty much the standard throughout our whole system right now. We got all four of our clubs are in first place. We got for as an organization 40 games over 500, and I don't think anybody else has got a record that that like that. And uh, we all take a little pride in that. But the end result is that uh, we want to develop players for the big league club. Part of that is winning, and we like to teach them how to win so that when they get there, they'll know what to do. Is there a player on this Hillcats roster right now that's really standing out to you? Well, <laughs> there's more than one. <laughs> uh, Bobby Bryant, uh, Bobby Bradley, rather, uh, Chang, the shortstop, uh, Matthias, the second baseman, uh, Allen, the center fielder. I mean, I, they're all they're all been pretty good. I mean, the whole lineup has been good. And we got some young pitching that we're pretty happy with as well. What you aim for, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and is there yeah. a player in the past that you saw make that turn from being good to great? Uh, that you've mentored in the past? That I mentored? Uh, God. You know what? Uh, there's been a few. Um, God, you, you're testing me now. <laughs> I mean, my mind ain't working as good Did as you Did you ever mentor Jim Tomey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Jimmy was. Was he a, good from the start? No, no, <laughs> he was good as a hitter. Yeah. But we had to find a position for Jimmy to play. He was a shortstop where we drafted him. We ended up moving him to third base, and then after playing third base, and this was in '97, we ended up getting uh, Matt Williams to play third base, and we took Jimmy and moved him to first base, and that's where he settled in the rest of his career. So, yeah, he was a he was a pretty interesting guy. I mean, yeah. he was great. Jimmy, I'll tell you who made uh, Jim Tomey a great hitter was Charlie Manuel right up here from Buena mm -hmm. Vista. Charlie, Charlie used to get him out and just work him to death trying to get him to pull the ball and he finally got that done and the rest is history. Yeah. And has there been players that you just knew were going to be great from the very beginning? Uh, yeah, Manny Ramirez 
was one, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, Manny was just a born natural hitter. But the one thing a lot of people don't know about Manny is that Manny was also a very good worker. And I've seen him when he was up in the big leagues and I was coaching there, come to the ballpark at 12 o'clock in the afternoon for a 7 o'clock night game. And he'd get dressed and he'd go out into the hitting tunnels with uh, one of the clubhouse guys who fed him uh, balls into a pitching machine to teach himself how to hit a slider and he became a pretty good breaking ball hitter by doing all that so it was it was uh yeah manny was probably the one guy yeah yeah well let's end on the hillcats question overall thoughts of this team right now oh man it's great coming in here watching them play i mean yeah. i come in here the other night they were making up that uh rain out game starting from the fourth inning on and before I knew it, they were down four to two, and before I knew it, they were up six to seven to four, and, and they were on their way again. I mean, there wasn't an easy out hit or made throughout the whole game. And then the next day, the next game they played, and the same same thing happened. Uh, it's amazing what uh, what this kid, what these kids are doing right now. Shaping up to be a real fun season. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the You're time welcome. and joining us. Enjoy it.